Hey everyone, um, my name is Adam Shamalik and I'm a member of the Fedora Modularity team in Fedora and welcome to the classroom about modularity for developers. So what I'm going to talk about today are uh, mainly four points. So I want to quickly talk about why Linux distributions are good and how modularity can improve them a little bit. Then I'll walk you through using modularity. I have prepared several specific cases that already happened. And then we have packaging overview. This will be mainly high level overview of the differences between traditional packaging and packaging with modularity. And then I'll do a walkthrough through the whole process of creating a new module, starting with an upstream source and finishing with a module. I won't do a live demo. I'll just walk you through all the steps you need to do and we have a great documentation that will cover everything. All right, so let's start with the with the first with the first topic, why Linux distributions? So first one, I, I have two benefits here and the first one is packaging and I love Linux distributions for packaging. I remember when I started like 10 years ago and I moved from Windows XP back then to a Linux distribution. One of the best thing was actually packaging because I didn't have to go to the internet and download everything and just figure out how to install it. But there was the package manager, it worked the same for everything. And that was great. And what I say that packaging makes software integrated, tested, updated, and easily installable. And that's all of this installable via DNF in Fedora, updated, tested, and integrated to get together all thanks to our packagers. So this is great. The other benefit is lifecycle. And I say that it brings an overtime stability to the diverse open source world. And what I mean by this, let me show you using some pictures. So in the open source world, there are hundreds, thousands, maybe 10,000s of projects, and they are maintained on different life cycles and they are starting new versions are starting or disappearing and it's kind of a mess. And if you wanna run something in production, for example, on a server, it might be tricky to figure out everything, where is it supported, if it gets updates and things like this. So what distributions do, they basically take some of these projects and they put them on the same life cycle. So it's a little easier to navigate. And then they are conveniently released as distribution releases in Fedora. It's for example, Fedora 27 or Fedora 28. And this has one life cycle and you can be sure that packages will do the best to keep their packages updated through the whole life cycle of Fedora and that there won't be any breaking changes, etc. So that's great for, for example, running in production. And because there are many other distributions out there, we can choose the speed that we want. For example, Fedora is in the middle, releases every half a year, which might be great for developers. And then we have, for example, CentOS that releases every, I think it was every three years. And so it's it, it's maybe a little bit suitable for servers. And then we have distributions like Arch Linux that basically don't have releases and just introduce new features all the time. And as I said, this is really good because different people have different needs. For example, developers tend to want newer versions and system administrators want the stability and package stuff and things like this. But even within a single release, there are people who want different pieces to move at different times. So for example, these are real quotes I got at conferences. For example, Fedora is too fast for me or Fedora is too slow for me. And it's always about some specific language runtime or application or a little piece within the distro. So there is a question, can Fedora be fast and slow at the same time? And the answer is yes. And that's what Fedora, Fedora modularity does. So let me walk you through the modularity, how it works and what it is. So. Packages. Packages are the core building blocks of Linux distributions. We don't do anything to packages, anything new. They still say, stay the same. Everything works fine. What's new though is something called modules. And these modules are logical groups of packages representing an application 
over a language runtime and they have a few benefits so let me show you so if we see the linux the federal release as we as we know it the traditional one i have federal 26 and federal 27 here and if i want to see what node.js for example were available i could see there was just one version in each but what happens with federal 28 at least for the 28 server edition that it introduced modularity and i can see some more options there so modules are the way of delivering multiple versions and they have multiple streams and streams are basically series of backwards in, in backwards compatible versions so if you choose one you can be basically sure that it follows to be stable but still gets updates and what happens if there is a new federal release well some streams will continue living throughout the life cycles of the underlying operating system so if you're a developer you can choose the newest one all the time if you're a sysadmin or you have federal on a server you can basically keep the same the same one you had before so they have independent life cycles so this is just a summary of the module benefits we have multiple streams so we can choose the version we have lifecycle independence so we can keep the version and then there is something called user use case installation i haven't talked about this but i will show you in a bit so with this there are two other important mechanisms in modularity one is default and defaults mean that you can choose a specific version only when you want to and this is important if you don't want to care about all the versions available you just want to install a package as you're used to or an application you basically get that thanks to defaults because there will be always one that is the default and if you actually choose a specific version then we have updates that will respect your choice and won't upgrade you to a different stream so if you chose for example node.js 8 back then and you keep updating your system and even upgrade to the new distribution release you will still keep, still keep the same stream unless you specifically change the stream so thanks to module your system can move fast and slow at the same time and this includes the packaging and lifecycle benefits included which is the main difference from installing software from upstream that you have the packaging how it's integrated how it works together it's maintained and it's on a specific life cycle so you can actually maybe run it in production so that was about what modularity is and now let me show you how you can actually use it so what can modules do i have three specific cases that modules can provide and i'll just walk you through them and i will demonstrate in the command line so case number one if traditional packages move to modules and i have a specific example of the dwm package which is a window manager in fedora it's a tiling window manager and there is also a second package accompanying it so this is an example of a package that completely moved from standalone packages to the modular world so if so you can see that there are three streams actually and one of them is default so if you don't want to really care about modules and you maybe upgrade from federal 28 to 29 or you do a fresh installation and just install the package everything stays the same the module will be enabled in background and it'll just work for you so i can show you how that works in in the command line so this is Fedora 28 and if I type dnf install dwm and this is just a normal package it'll just show me the package and I can install it I won't do it now I don't want to waste your time but this is how it works this is what we know if I do it on Fedora 29 dnf install dwm it'll do the same thing from the user perspective but there are other things happening in the background so i'll just say no again 
and I can do command DNF module list. And this command will show me all the modules that are available in, in the release. So I'll just scroll up a little bit and I can see DWM and the other three streams. And what happens is that the 6.1 is default, so I'm getting packages automatically from it. If I wanna install a different version, I can just specify it simply by typing DNF module install DWM, for example, colon 6.0, which is the older version. And I get it then. I'll say no again because I don't want to waste the time. So that was moving packages from traditional to the modular world. And let's have a look at the case number two. So this is additional versions becoming available. And I have MongoDB as an example. So in Fedora 28, we have a we had a MongoDB package, MongoDB 3.6. And in 29, this package has been upgraded to 4.0. So everything is the same as normally, but in addition, they added two module streams and one is the 3.6, which is the one from Fedora 28. And there is one even older in case you wanna use it, for example, on a server or somewhere, and you have a dependency on the, on the same thing. So what happens here if I have modules and traditional package in the combination. So let's have a look. So I will do this on Fedora 29 as well. So if I type DNF install MongoDB, I will get the traditional package 4.0 version, which is expected. Nothing, nothing new. If I want to use the Alternative version, I will do again DNF module list. So see what's in there and I can see MongoDB right here. None of these are default, so they are not consumed. And I can install them using the same command I showed you before, or I can do something called enable, which will enable those packages on, enable the module on my system and I will get the packages from the module, but not from not the traditional one, it'll be kind of overridden because enabled modules always have priority. So if I do DNF module install GoDB and was it 3.4 for example, oh, so this is the installation command. Sorry, if I do DNF module enable, This will enable the MongoDB module on my system. And now I changed how the system behaves. So if I do DNF module, sorry, DNF install MongoDB, which is the package, I get the version from the module. So that's how I can choose the alternative version as well. All right, let's have a look at the case number three. So these are existing modules that just continue living. And this is nothing special. We had the Node.js in Fedora 28 and we still have it in Fedora 29. What happened here also is that Node.js stream six ended life, for example. So this module just stops existing and you need to upgrade to a new version. One thing that's notable here is that I have Node.js eight and 10 module streams. And I also have packages, which are standalone. In Fedora 28, that's Node.js 8. And in Fedora 29, that's Node.js 10. And one could wonder why I, why the packages are there. So that's a temporary state. Well, I'll probably describe it later, but this is mostly for building. We are currently not able to build traditional packages against modules. So this is a workaround, but in the future, there is a service coming that will actually do this, but this is just an inter intermediate state. So if you see something like this, don't worry, that's expected. I don't think I will show you a demo for this because I showed all the commands before. 
and it should just work exactly the same. And now I have a bonus, and this is the use case driven installation. How do we simplify installation with modules? So this is the picture with MongoDB again, and let's have a look what's actually in the MongoDB 3.6 stream. So if I expand it a little bit, I can see that there are two profiles. They are called also installation profiles, and they basically help people to install the module in a different way. So this is a database, and I can install the database as a server or as a client or both. And benefit of this, this is that the user doesn't need to care about the individual packages, but they can install the application in a specific use case. And I can demonstrate that as well, how that works. So I'm again on Fedora 29. And if I do DNF module install, now Mongo DB, it was 3.6. And I can do slash client to specify the profile. So I can see that those two packages are installed. MongoDB tools and MongoDB. I say no. And if I change climb to server, MongoDB server is getting installed, plus some dependencies, of course. Let me say no again. So that was how modularity works for users and what you can actually achieve with modularity. And now let's have a, have a look at the packaging. So this is a very simplified view on the packaging process for traditional packages. And there are basically six steps, three of which you use once and then three that you continue doing mostly forever. So you get the source, you package it, send it on a review, and then you push it to this git, build it, publish it, and people can use it. And if you have an update, you again, push the update, build the update, publish the update, and it goes on and on and on. What happens with modularity is that we change those orange steps. So the ones that you perform all the time, and we add one new, which is the define module that will you do just one time. And let me walk you through all of these steps and just explain a little bit more detail. So. First is getting source. This is the same. You just go to the upstream, grab whatever they have, or, or make a tarball yourself, and that's it. Packaging, again, the same. They are the same packaging guidelines. You write the same spec, no changes in there. Everything's good. Again, you send it on a review. It's the same, the same review, the same process, the same rules. What changes here is when you want to push it to this git. So we have something called stream branching, and this will, this is mostly to simplify the workflows because historically, if with traditional packages, which is on the left, you had to push the package into released branches, and there is a branch for every release. And even though you have the same version, you need to push it into the branch, into each branch. So we have introduced something called stream branching, and you can basically do branches on based on upstream versions, mostly major versions or whatever makes sense that you want to maintain. And then you can build those against anything, and I'll show you in a bit. So this is the mo this is the major difference between the branching, and you can do the branching basically any way you like or any way it makes sense. And because we have those branches, which are kind of release independence, it's no longer clear where those things end up, right? So that's why we have modules. And one of the main things here is that they define which branch goes into which release. They also define more things like the installation profile or an API, which I'll describe in a minute, or the description. But the main technical reason is that they define what gets built where. And then if you want to build your software, you build modules, not packages. 
And this is important if you have, for example, modules with multiple packages in it, you just prepare all the packages, push them into the branches, and then you submit a single build that will build it everywhere. And I said build it everywhere. What does it mean? So we have something called stream expansion, and this is how it basically builds everywhere. So this is a view on the source code, and I can see basically one source for to applicate for each application version. I have two runtime versions, so there is one source for each, and there is just for simplification the rest of Fedora, just 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 so you can see how it works. And if I want to build it, this happens. So everything gets built again, everything. So I have both runtimes on both Fedora releases, and I have both applications on both runtimes. So this is something you theoretically can do. And that's why you submit just one module build and just everything happens automatically for you. And I'll also show you in a bit more details. And then if you want to publish, you again publish the whole modules and not the packages individually. All right, so let me go to the federal documentation. And this is what you get if you go to docs.federalproject.org. So this is the documentation. And if I want to find information about modularity, I just scroll down to engineering teams right here. And then there is Fedora modularity link. And everything that you want to know is in this section, making modules. And that's what I'm just going to walk through and I'm confident it will answer all the questions that were asked about the process. So two, links here, adding new modules and updating existing modules. I'll just go through the adding because that'll cover all the steps from the start to, to the end. I won't be actually doing these things, but I'll be commenting and maybe even taking questions probably if there are any and clarifying the rest. So we saw the process, we need to go to upstream, make the package. And there is a link to the federal packaging guidelines so, sorry, to the federal review process, and it points you to the packaging guidelines, and everything is basically the same in there. One new thing here is requesting the branch, and this is the stream branches that are based on an upstream version and not the federal release. So there is this command, and one thing to note here that there is something called SL, which is a service level. So this is a way, or this will be a way, how to define how long is the module going to live. And we are currently in the in the process of redesigning this because this this is not ideal. So you just need to select a, night, a date in the future, basically. One thing to note is that it needs to end either 12-01 and just like select something mostly randomly this time, and we will improve this and send information to the develop list. And then there is the branch name, of course. This will create a ticket in the federal infrastructure or release engineer and one of the groups, and they will make it for you, get a notification. This is a manual process, so it might take a few hours, but hopefully this won't take too long. One nice thing is that if you have a module with only one package, that shares the name and shares the branch. This will create the module repository for you as well. And let me show you how the repositories look. So if I go to this git, so that's src.fedoraproject.org. There are namespaces now. So I have, for example, rpms, so slash rpms slash httpd. This is the upstream of HTTPD, or I'm not sure if you have an HTTPD module, but let's go to WDWM. All right, that's the package I actually talked about. So this is the package, and if I want to see the module, it's in the modules namespace, so that's slash 
modules slash dwm and let me even make that bigger and these are the stream branches that are created and these are in both packages and both modules so then you have the they have the package reviewed and everything is in place so you just push it into this git and you can go to the module definition i had the slide before a little bit empty because there are many details i want to cover so let's just have a look at the at the module definition so this is here it's defining modules in module md and there is a really good example here that will just show you everything you can you summary your description which is obvious it's the summary or description there is a license of this very file so you can just keep it to mit and these are the dependencies the these are the modular dependencies and this is a this is a way how to define in what releases for what releases you want to build if you leave it like this it means it requires all platforms so all Fedora releases which are active and it requires all platforms or Fedora releases which are active again so this will if you submit a build this will do the stream expansion across all the active releases for you automatically if you want to do something crazier i'll show you in a bit then there is api which actually as i said that module streams are a series of backwards compatible versions these are the packages that have the promise and other packages doesn't have to have that because they can be bundled dependencies or libraries or something so these are the ones that you commit making stable installation profiles are here for helping people with installation so that was for example the client or server with the database everything is commented again you basically need a name a description and list of packages and it'll just install it as a package group mostly and this is the definition of what belongs to this module so i have a module name and there is a reference which is a branch in this git it's not the version it's branch in this git so you can actually select the right source you can even use commit or tags i don't think these are recommended generally but they are technically possible and if you know what you're doing you can definitely do that and also worth mentioning there is a tool called fedmod in fedora that can automate filling this thing, filling this file for you if if you're interesting if you're interested all right love confusion is here about the dependencies if you want to do something different than just build these modules across all the platforms so let me scroll down and show you something more detailed and it's right here all right so we can so if i want to for example build just for single release i can just specify it if i want to build for everything except one release i can specify it this way if i want to selectively choose multiple i can do and if i want to build against other modules which is useful as i showed on the slides with the stream expansion as i had a runtime and then an application i can do that here so this says build requires all platforms build requires old versions of node.js so for example if i have two platforms active and two streams of node.js this will create four different binary builds out of the same module for you and then the client tooling will actually figure out what to install on the system automatically and there is also an, a complex example worth mentioning if you actually want to see i i'm not going to explain it here but if you want to do crazy stuff you can definitely have a look here and or even ask questions then on the IRC. All right, so let me go back to the adding new modules and I have the module definition done now. And again, everything here is documented. So there is the request repo if it didn't happen before for you automatically. There is how you can request branch. And this is useful if you wanna, for example, add a new stream to an existing module and one of the things that also worth mentioning there is no review for the module md file because it's basically just a configuration file that says these packages go here and will be built in this way and installed in this way so 
there is no review, just request the repo. Pushing into this Git again, documented nicely. Then there is the module build. So there is the section called building modules, and I will talk about how it actually is built. So as I said, you don't build individual packages, but you build modules. And this is meant to help you, for example, if you have many different packages in there, you can set a specific build order in advance and have one command that just builds everything for you and you don't have to wait and submit one package by one. And I mentioned build orders. Let me also show you in the module MD how that looks like. Um, I just search build or there. Yeah. So this is in the section of components. So this is where you define the packages, package name, descriptions, and the discrete branch. You also have build order, which is basically a build group. So packages in the same build group are built at the same time. And build groups with higher number are built later. This is useful when you building an update of a module. So let's go back to the building modules. And let's talk about rebuild strategies. So the default is that if you have a module with, for example, 10 packages, and you only update a single package, only the single package gets rebuilt, which is meant to save resources, save time and everything. But if you're actually using build groups and you know that the first one needs to get rebuilt the first one and then you need to rebuild the other ones because they are for example build dependencies you can specify a different build groups different build group we have three here only changed is the default and there's just the changed packages all means everything gets rebuilt all the time regardless of it being updated or not and then there's changed and after so this means that the first package that gets rebuilt that is changed gets rebuilt and then every other following build group is also rebuilt. So that's all the build dependencies actually worked out. And you can specify it in the build command by like this. All right, so we've covered how to get the package, get it through review and push it to this Git. And that's where the story ends for packages. And then we covered how to define a module, push it to this git, and submit a module build. When you submit a module build and it succeeds, the module exists in the system and can be actually consumed by other modules as build dependencies. But if you actually want to use it uh, or make it available for packages, you need to submit a module update. So again, you don't do package updates individually, but you do, you do the module update. And that's also in the adding new modules section. So I go right down, module build, publishing the module. So we use body, which is the same tool as for packages. And there is a little complicated um, currently workflow how to do this. So what you need to do is that you need to find the Find your module in Koji, and then there will be the Koji tag value of it. I can even show you how that's gonna work. And I use this in Bodhi as a as an update. Oh, I'm not sure I can even do something right now. So this is a little bit confusing. But it's everything is everything is shown here, and everything should just work out. You basically, when you submit the build, you can you need to remember the build i build ID, and I think there is even a service running somewhere um, that will show you all the all the build IDs on on the website. Otherwise, you can do use the fat package the package command when you're submitting the build, and I kind of skip that here. Yeah, when you submit the module build, it'll tell you a build, module build name, and then you need to 
use in the in the step for the body update and this is obviously also one of the steps that we want to improve a lot so this will be coming in the future and this will be basically supporting the modules updates a little bit more straightforward than that but this should this should just do so when when you submit the module update and it gets tested by users gets karma and gets pushed into stable it's available and it's the scenario where the module exists but isn't enabled by default if you want to manage defaults we have a page here also um, managing defaults and there is a pega repo in the relange in the relange namespace so you just go into it open files all right that's the new pega uh, I clicked on the oh sorry I clicked on the wrong link this is the one so it's the Fedora module defaults and if I go into the files I can see a file per module so for example the DWM we talked about I can open it here and this says that this is a file that defines module defaults and this is the module name DWM. Default stream is 6.1, and this can be sometimes missing. So that means there is no default stream. And then there are also default profiles. So 6.0 has a default profile called default. 6.1 has a profile default called default. Um, the profiles are the thing we talk about in the database scenario where you have client or server and basically if you want to install the module in some kind of default behavior if there is even any many modules define the default profile here so you don't have to enable and install individual packages but you can just install it and it works and you can even send the PR or I think the preferred way is to submit the sorry open an issue into this repo we also have a note about submitting a federal change so if you change the default like mid-release or if you introduce a new default that would have big effects on other people it's it's advised to open a federal change to notify everyone and just get in saying basically the same workflow as if you introducing a new major version of something into federal that has a big impact Right, so that was the whole workflow right in there. I can just show again this image. So we talk about how to get source, how to package it, how to review. That's the same process that has been here. Then you want to write a module div, module MD file that default that defines all the things about your module. And then there is a cycle of pushing, building, and publishing. Not the package, but the module, and just goes on again and that should be it and I hope that was at least a little helpful or clear and yeah if you want to learn more there is a documentation link or if you want to access the documentation there and you're also welcome to connect with us on the IRC channel and please try modularity and that would be great if you if you could use it give us feedback and and get more versions into Fedora all right, are there any questions? The only one I wanted to call out was, um, I'm not sure who it was that asked the Bodhi question. Did they feel like they got the answer to their question? Yeah, to, uh, to summarize, I think the que the question was, um, is Bodhi aware of modules? The answer is yes, it is. And uh, the way to go about it is submit your update just as you would for normal bare packages. And if you type in the module name in the in the um, text field where you normally put in the, the the package names for the update, it will list you any uh, new module builds uh, of your module uh, which haven't been pushed out as an update yet up to that point. So the the the, the process is very similar to to uh, pushing out updates for normal packages. 
Yeah, thanks, Niels. So I think that's it. All right, thanks everyone for coming and I'll send a follow up with the YouTube link for the recording if you want to share that or watch that again and we'll make sure that all the questions that are in the chat are answered.